Good morning everyone. Happy Saturday. Um, I'm going to give it a minute or two for some people to join and then we'll get started right away. Um, today we just need our basic supplies. I have my 01, my Tortillon. I have a mechanical pencil. You can use a regular pencil if you prefer that. And then just for some time and some speed and for coloring in, I also have my graphic. I also have a stack of tiles. You can use tiles or you can use a, um, a sketchbook or some paper, whatever you have handy. Um, I tend to usually use Zentangle tiles for these little lives, but you can use whatever you have handy. Um, I, I am very glad to see that I have a bunch of people already joining. So good morning. Good morning, Cindy, um, and everyone else that has just joined. I have been talking to a couple people over the last week because I know that I tend to tangle very quickly during these lives. So I want to say again right here at the beginning and I'll probably say this several times throughout the live. I do tangle very quickly on my lives because my goal is to give you some ideas and hope that you will take those ideas and put them into use in your own Zentangle practice. It isn't necessarily designed for you to follow along at the same pace I am. My lives stay up on my Facebook page and I also am in the process of also putting them up on YouTube and on my website. So they'll always be there for you to watch again and again as many times as you like. So when you're watching it, um, when you're watching it as a recording, you can start and stop as many times as you like. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I am, I did do something a little different in that some of my examples I am going to talk about like I used to do instead of trying to do all of my examples in the half hour, 45 minutes that I usually allow for this. So this is Anamoto, um, which I love. I always think it looks like jewelry. This is the first variation that we're going to use. This is the standard variation. It's the one that I always think of and you're, you're probably going to laugh, but if you listen to my, my lives, you know I have a tendency to, to give stuff these little descriptions in my mind that may or may not make sense to anyone but me, but I call this my panda version. Um, I think that because obviously if you turn it and you tip it, it looks like a little panda head. So, um, but the way that this is designed is you have your big orb and then you have these little darker orbs with a little accent on them kind of over top of those. So that's one of the ways that it can be drawn. I'm going to demonstrate this because I think you can't draw a pattern until you know the, I always say the official way, but really it's just the primary way that it's usually drawn and I like to share a bunch of different options, a bunch of different ideas for ways to use the tangles because it's not fun to always get stuck in a rut. I am going to demonstrate this one as well because this has a, some shading techniques that I have not shared before. So I'm also going to do this one. Um, this one I just wanted to talk about a little bit. So this border or, is on a moto but a simplified version. So I have not gone in and put the little pearls in in these channels. And instead of using a straight border, I used a curvy border. Just because you may see Anamoto drawn straight all the time or with just a slight curve does not mean that you can't make it a more wavy or curvy line in which to, um, to showcase your tangle. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everybody. I also, I, I like to use it as a border and then I like to use some heavy graphite on the inside. And then I would do other tangling or maybe I'd just add something simple in the center. Okay, so I'm not necessarily going to demonstrate this one. I just kind of wanted to show that as an example. All right, so... We'll start with our basic Anamoto. I'm going to take a tile and my Micron. I'm very excited. I'm using brand new pens today, which is always fun. I love the way a new Micron feels. 
I tend to be very hard on my pens so I had a new one the other day and I already cracked the tip on it so I was getting that kind of um, I save them actually because sometimes I will create a uh, a split in my in my pen that actually gives me two lines like a little V which is kind of fun all right so for Anamoto the way I originally learned how to draw it the way that you will find the step out on Zentangle all of you know the way that you will see it drawn the most often is this version so I'm gonna demonstrate this version and then we'll move on to some other variations and we'll talk about some other variations too. And I'm not going to do the whole tile. I'm just going to do two stripes of it. Um, keeping in mind something that I'm not going to show a whole lot is that by changing the size of, um, of these stripes, the size of your, your pattern is going to give you a different feel. Okay. I tend to like to draw on the diagonal, so I tip my tile to how it's most comfortable. And I'm going to start by drawing a line from one part of my border to the other. I'm going to leave some space. In this case, um, I don't know, maybe about an inch. And then I'm going to create an aura of that line. And don't stress about it if it's bigger or smaller. It's just going to be, you know, kind of your spacing. If you draw this and you decide, oh, that's too, or that's too big, you can always make these channels on the inside so you could go in right you know what in fact I'll, I will actually do that so I'm gonna go in here and then I'm gonna turn my tile and I'm gonna make this other line this other aura also on the inside so now I have a slightly smaller space than I used here and that's fine. I just thought that by doing that, you could see that they do take on a different look just by varying the size, even just a little bit. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come to about the center of this, and I am going to make an orb. Orbs are like circles, except you don't have to worry about them being perfectly round. They can be more oval shaped or not, not perfect. We don't have to worry about perfect here. I'm going to come off to the side. I'm going to create another one. I want these to touch. So I'm going to fill up this, this area with orbs. So they're kind of like little pearls all nestled together. I love Anamoto. I think it looks like a piece of jewelry when you're done. Okay. So there is my my initial channel. I'm going to use for speed purposes, I'm going to use my graphic to put these these other little black pearls on here. But you're, you can certainly use your O1 to do this. I like to use the graphic when I'm coloring in something that's a lot of black that I want to be nice and solid. So when you come into your Anamoto, you're going to get a different feel if you nestle these little pearls next to or if you place them over top. Okay, and I say that, um, and it may not necessarily look like it, but as I come in, I'm going to create an orb that's slightly overlapping these bigger pearls. And then I'm just going to color it in. And I'm coloring it in and I'm leaving a little white dot. So if I'm thinking about this as like the face of a clock, it's just below the, the 12 hand or the 12 o'clock. Okay. And I'm going to add that on each. So again, it's just slightly over top of the other two orbs. And I'm going to do one at the top of each of these. And here I'm kind of off the edge so I, you won't see the little highlight. Okay. Now I'm going to come down and I'm going to do this lower part. And I'm just doing the same thing. So I'm adding that little, that little black pearl, slightly overlapping, and then coloring it in to just leave that little highlight. 
If you are using a graphic pen, one thing to keep in mind is especially when they're new and they're nice and wet and juicy, um, you it's going to stay wet. So you don't want to drag your hand over it. Okay. So you can see how it looks like these little, almost looks like a jewelry setting. Like this pearl is set in and then these are set on top of it. I'm now going to go back to my Micron and I'm going to come into these smaller auras, these little channels, and I'm going to add in even smaller little orbs. And this is one of those, those parts where it can be very mindful, very meditative to just kind of sit and relax and make all these little orbs. And if I was doing this to just be tangling, I would be taking my breath and I would be making an orb and I would really be mindful of trying to make them all the same size to fit them perfectly inside the, the, little, the little channels that I've made for them. But because I like to show you a lot of different examples, I go a little quick here. Um, but I just want to fill these up. So that I have this, this little stripe of Anamoto. Okay. I can do a second, a second row of this by simply looking at the the width so remember i went maybe about an inch so i could go and create an aura of this line and then i can decide is this about the same size and because it is i can make my little aura on the outside this time right and then i'm not going to finish this but i just wanted to show you so then you would just repeat so you would make your orb and don't worry about them being perfect. Tangling is about perfectly imperfect. It's what makes it beautiful. It's what makes it yours. It's what adds that touch of humanity to it, right? So what you can see is obviously this next one would go a lot faster because they're nestled together. So again, I would come in and I would lay down a black pearl over the top and at the bottom. And I'll come back in and I'll finish this later, but not on camera, but so there we go. And then I would, of course, fill in my, my little orbs down here. Now the way to shade this one, and you can shade from the top like I did here, or you can shade from the bottom like I'm going to do on this one. So all I did is I took my pencil, my graphite, and I laid down a line, and I'm going fairly heavy, but not really heavy. I'm not pressing. I'm just laying down some graphite. And I didn't draw over my black pearls here because I find that graphite over black tends to look shiny and I don't necessarily love that look. So I try and work around my um, my black whenever possible. So now I'm going to take my tortillon and I'm going to smudge. And this I kind of do straight across. Okay, so I am going over the black here. So I'm just going to pull that graphite up to about the middle of these pearls and I'm you know I'm softening it at the edge where it's darker and then I'm using less pressure and pulling less up to till I get to about the center okay and when I look at that you know maybe I have some little spaces here that there's some gaps and I can add a little bit more graphite to kind of darken it right by that edge but it gives you this, this 3D effect that's really pleasing. And you could also have done it so you added um, that exact same shading on the other side and it would look like you have um, shadow on both sides. So it will just give you different dimension depending on where you add your shading. Okay. Another way you could have shaded this and the reason that I um, I wanted to have a second row here is instead of shading it like this you could actually come in and shade this the way that you would shade 
orbs normally. So I think of them like the face of a clock and from a, just over nine o'clock to just before six, I add kind of this, this curve of graphite. And then I will take my tortillon and I'll soften that, spreading it lightly around the edge. Okay. Till you can till they have kind of a a three-dimensional kind of look. If I've done it that way, I also come in and I add a little curve of graphite on the outside of these little black pearls, which I will then just simply soften so that it looks like there's a shadow cast on top of those little pearls. Okay, so as you can see, drawn the same way, shaded two different ways, gives you different different looks. And you could, if you like, for instance, you like this appearance of the little pearls, but you like this type of shading, you can combine the two as well. Okay, so, and I'll demonstrate that right here. So I would come over here and I would need to lay down more graphite because I already have quite a bit there, but I would just soften it to add that kind of little depth of shadow to make it look like it pops up. Okay, so I hope that, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some ideas on how to use the basic pattern. The next thing I wanted to show you and we're going to talk about this. I'm not going to demonstrate this one. Okay, so this is a pattern within a pattern and I chose henna drum because I like to make patterns into flowers and I think most of you who have been here before know that I try and do that every time in some way. So this time I wanted to use a pattern within a pattern to make my flower. Not that you couldn't use this pattern itself to create petal leaves or something like that, but I had so many different ideas of things I wanted to show you today that I, I wanted to do it this way. So all I did is I took a pattern, so henna drum, and I drew my basic henna drum, and then I looked at the components, the pieces. So this crescent moon kind of shape right here that's that makes up the center of my my henna drum, you can see here is my main piece, here is my one channel, and I left this one empty so that you could see I'm going to add in my little, my little orbs. So you can see how I treat this curve right here as this. Okay. And then because I wanted more of that, I added a simplified version around the edge here. So this is just, it replicates this, but it also replicates this. And it's very hard to see. I'm going to do a manual zoom here. But if you look, you can see that these actually have those little tiny pearls. The only thing I didn't do because I didn't want it to be too busy is I left out the pearls in this, in the outer channels, in the outside border of that. Um, if you look at the live after we're done, it will be um, it will be spelled out for you. And then I just added a little bit of shading. I just added some graphite right in here. So that's one example of a pattern within a pattern. Another example of a pattern within a pattern, and I have two different versions of pretty much the same pattern here. So this is a ruckus that I had just started. And you can see here I used, we'll do that manual zoom thing again. You can see that I used that pattern right in here. I could then come in and finish out my, and I'm not going to, I just wanted to kind of show you. I could then finish out my pattern. And this is the Aruckus pattern that was introduced at my CZT seminar, right? And I could add from here, I could add another row of that or however many rows of that that I wanted, okay? 
So don't be afraid to use your patterns in ways that maybe you didn't think about before. If you have a pattern and it has empty space or you can make empty space, you can fill that with another pattern. Okay. So here is the Arrakis tile again, done slightly differently. You can see that I added the pattern in here, but then I also added partial um, portions of it. Okay, so I could obviously continue and make the Anamotos go all the way around each of these orbs, or I can just leave them with the partial little bits and pieces, which gives a completely different look as well. Okay, so I didn't want to take a ton of time t doing a pattern within a pattern, but I did want to show you some examples of how you can do that. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay, I'm going to move on. Let's see here. Put my little stack of tiles. So last night I, I wanted to redo a one of these tiles. Actually, I wanted to redo this Arrakis tile. And then I got sidetracked and I was up till about 2 in the morning just playing with all the different fun ways that I can play with this pattern. Um, Alright, so we've done the... I'm going to call it the traditional, which really isn't the right word, but I, I can't think of which word I want to use this morning. So the way that I normally draw it, the way that you see it drawn the most often, like this. I've shown it to you as a border. I've shown it to you as a pattern within a pattern. You can use it as a string. So you could make um, another row of this going in an opposite direction and then fill the empty negative spaces with other patterns. I'm saving this one um, for a little bit because uh, this has kind of some funky, fun shading and I want to spend some time on that. So I want to see how much time I have at the end. Okay. Another pattern that we can do with this, or another way of doing this pattern, is instead of making a straight or even just a curved line, you can make some kind of funky little um, scalloped pattern. And I'm going to do another one on here. So the way I do this is I make dots going across my tile. Okay, so often like we would for maybe bales or some other patterns, we, would, we could make a, a little bit of a dot guideline. Um, I think of doing this this way, it always makes me think of if Anamoto and Inapod had a baby. This would, be the, this would be the way that this looks out. I see I have some new people joining, so welcome. Um, I know that you probably didn't get the beginning, but you can certainly rewind and watch. It'll stay up on my page so that you're welcome to, to play along at any time. So I have one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter how many dots I really have. I just lay down some dots. I keep them about the same width apart. In this case, I they're about finger width apart. But you can make them smaller. You could make them bigger. And I'm going to start from one, and I'm just going to make kind of a little curve. From one to another. So much like we would do with crescent moon or some other patterns, we just kind of make that little ladybug shape from one dot to the other. And now I'm going to flip my tile over and I'm going to go in the opposite direction, right? And you could make these more like elliptical or rounder. It all depends on the way you draw them. And of course, by varying that, you're going to get still another look, okay? Now that I have these shapes, I'm going to come in and right about in the middle, I'm going to squish in an orb. And you'll know you did it because it's going to kind of look like an eye. Okay. I'm going to add two smaller orbs on each side. And then in a way that is a little different than the way we drew Anamoto the first time, I'm just going to fit in 
two those two little orbs that the, the little pearls like this instead of being on top they're just nestled in okay so I make that orb I put I put a smaller orb on either side and then I put two still smaller orbs squished into those spaces um, we're a Disney family so when I look at this all I see are hidden Mickeys okay I'm gonna continue I'm gonna fill up so I'm gonna do and I usually do it so that I do one step at a time so I would add in all of these center orbs and then I would do all of these orbs that are kind of on the sides and then I would add um, these little accent orbs okay once I have that all done I will come in and I'm only going to color in a couple of these but I'm just going to color in around these these little orbs that I've added right so I want this little background to be black and if I was doing this really big I could use my graphic but because these spaces are kind of tiny I want them to I want to be able to get into those little spaces so I'm just using my 01 it's a nice part about an 01 is that it is small enough to do really tiny fine work but it is still big enough to color in without um, without being tedious so I have I'm just gonna do one more of these where I color it in because it's nice to see the effect as you go right and um, maybe when you're done you you look at it and you think oh I had room for more you can always come in with a white jelly roll and even add just an extra orb with just a dot of white okay so once I have kind of this chain which always looks very bracelet like to me I'm going to create an aura of the of the whole top right and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna create another aura so that it kind of has just this little border around it the hidden Mickey's so if you look right here you can see this is Mickey's head here's his ear here's his other ear um, it's just one of those those weird things that because I loved Disney so much my whole life I tend to see hidden Mickey's anytime I see a lot of circles or arcs. just adjusting here I got a little blurry there okay so the way I sh shaded this is the same way that I shaded this one so I'm gonna come in with my graphite and I'm going to lay down some graphite and you could shade on the right you could shade on the left wherever you want your shading to be this is just how I do it so I added a strip of graphite and then I'm gonna soften it so that I have this halo kind of on these white pearls okay I'm going to come into these outer edges and I'm going to add those little tiny orbs I'm just kind of bending my hand so that you can see where I'm laying this down so and I'm just kind of squishing these in I'm just doing it kind of quick here to fill in and I'm not going to finish the whole piece okay I'm just laying this down here so that when I shade it you can kind of see what I did okay so I have that there and then I take my pencil and I put a stripe of graphite right across the top and again just a little bit right across the bottom and that's why I shaded first because I want that shading to stand on its own and then I come in 
and I soften that as well and now it looks more like it's set into a piece. So that is a way to incorporate Animoto not in a straight line. Okay, let's see here. So I'll set that off to the side now. Does anybody have any questions so far? I'm now going to move on to another tile. I'm going to lay down my border. I'm going to make a curvy, just because, just for fun, but not, it's not going to be like the border or like this one. It's just going to kind of, I'm creating a, um, just a wavy border instead of some straight lines. And then I'm going to add a very narrow little edge on either side. So it kind of looks like a little river. And then I'm going to add one more little aura. So these kind of almost look like waves now. Okay. Here you go, Cindy. This is the one you wanted you wanted to see again. Okay. So we have these these waves. I'm going to mentally and I'll draw a little line for you. Normally I just do this mentally. I'm going to kind of create a line down the center in my mind. Okay, I did it in pencil here. You could do it in pencil because you're not necessarily, necessarily going to see it. It's going to fade into the background. But you can just do it in your head if you want to save, save this step. And now I'm going to double my orbs. So I'm actually adding in an orb on either side of that pencil line. So this is a double Animoto. And you can see I'm not sticking to it being exact. I'm just kind of fitting them in where they fit. Okay. And then I'm going to take my pen and again I'm going to use my graphic because I just want it to be bigger. I'm going to add in, so I'm adding an orb here. I'm not adding highlights this time either because I want to change up the look. But I'm adding a fairly large pearl over top of each of these. Okay at the top, at the bottom, and they'll vary in size depending on where you place them. And now I'm going to fit one in in between each of these two. So you may have more than, they may not line up exactly, but you'll be able to tell where you need one. Okay. And then you can sh you can shade this using this type of shading or you can shade it using this type of shading. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I like to skip this first row here and add my little pearls on the outside. But this time instead of just making them so that they fit all nice and tightly together. I'm going to make one, I'm going to put a dot, and then I'm going to make another, and I'm going to put a dot. Just to add kind of a little bit of a pattern 
in that channel. So you can see how, again, we have another look with this. And as I said before, varying the size will give you a completely different look as well. Sorry, I know sometimes I get my hand in the way. Work our way through. Okay. Something I wanted to show you that I didn't do on any of the others. We talked about using Anamoto as a pattern or to, as a fill, like putting a pattern within a pattern. We're going to do that again, only this time instead of using Anamoto to go inside of something, we're going to use a pattern inside our Anamoto pattern. So I'm going to come into these and I'm actually going to use the pattern jetties which you make by adding some little lines and then I like to fill them in and as I fill them in I leave a little space so that it looks like there's a highlight and I don't make these all going in the same direction so I turn my tile to put these stripes so they kind of start to look like um, pole balls or Christmas ornaments or really just about anything you might want them to be and again then I would come in and I can fill this in and I turn my tile so I'm making a stripe across the center with two little channels which I like to use this because it kind of replicates the pattern that we're already using with the two little channels okay and then I would color this in and I'll do another one right here and I will finish this this tile off later you'll be able to see it on the pattern sheet all finished but I don't want to do the whole thing because I want to show you kind of another little example of this on one of the other tiles okay before I shade so coming back to this tile which is kind of my practice tile here since I have a full one of this something else you could do um, I use jetties as my my fill here, but you could do something like um, um, So you could do like a print homes Spiral that into your pearls or you could even do something like Some simple curved lines And if you do these in a bunch of different ways, it, it kind of gives a feel almost like a Pandora bracelet to me. So just something to keep in mind. You can do some really fun stuff with this. I like the spirals myself, and you can either leave them plain, or you can do something in the center where you mimic the pearls that maybe you had stacked there for yet another look. Okay? I want to come back to this one I'm gonna do one more stripe actually because it'll give you more of an idea of what it'll look like finished okay and then to shade these I would come in with my graphite and I would add graphite along the edges of each individual little pool ball kind of side there and then I would soften it and they're going to take on a round look 
and you can add a little bit on the other side if you want to. But I hope this kind of gave you an idea of all the neat ways that you could play with this to create a really, really fun look. Okay, um, so let me see here. So I've shown you this one and this. Five. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. And this is, this is a really simple one. So we're going to take a tile. We are going to just make this, we'll go straight across this time. Because again, changing up your the way you, you draw your lines, every little variation that you add is going to add a variable to your pattern. Okay, so I'm going to add slightly thicker this time, and it's not dramatic, but it's definitely a bigger outline than I had used before. Now this time, I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to make my orbs. Okay, I'm going to color them in. So uh, another way to create kind of that highlight is to, and this is the way that I do it, and I build it in as I draw them. So from the top, I draw a small line down at what would be about midnight. And then I curve kind of like a little apostrophe shape. And you could do a dot if you wanted to, but I, I like changing up that shape every so often. Okay, so once I have that in place, then I just color around the outside. This is why, I, this is the main reason I like to have a graphic handy for when I want to color in a really big space. But again, if you are coloring and you are laying down a lot of ink, you need to be careful that you don't drag your hand through it because we are using cotton paper and a heavy duty pen and that will stay wet for a little while. And I will continue and finish off this little half one later, kind of off camera, just so that it will be a finished tile when I put it in the pattern sheet for you. This is also a great way to draw cherries if you were coloring them in in red. Or apples. If you are one of those people that hates the squeaky sound of pen, I apologize. I actually happen to love that sound. It, I find it very soothing, but I know it drives people crazy. But every once in a while you get a squeaky pen and you really can't do a ton with that. Okay. So I have those drawn now and they're colored in. I'm going to come in and I am going to take my micron and I am going to add a pearl, an orb in white nestled into these spaces. So obviously I can't draw white over the black that I've colored in in my black in my in my micron but if I'd wanted to I could have used my jelly roll and I could have drawn them and actually gone over top of the black so that's just another way that you could do it but I wanted to show you this variant okay so these end up nestled in the depths so in this in these interstitial spaces right for my my little channels, I'm going to add in some little orbs, and you could do these in white or in black. It's entirely up to you. 
Um, you could play with this, try it in, you know, these little white open orbs, or you could color them all in black, and you would get a different look depending on what you did with it. Okay, now, before I shade this, I want to come back to my graphic pen, or if you're using your Micron, you can just do this as well. I now want to expand this orb, and not a lot. I'm just kind of drawing around the outside a little bit, because I want to give the impression that this time, this black orb, this black pearl, is going over the edges of the smaller ones. So it, like it's spilling out of those, over those channels. And that it's spilling out over those little white pearls. Okay, it's just it, because when we shade it, it's gonna give a different impression. Okay, this little half one is driving me crazy because it's not colored in yet. Now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to put graphite around the outside of these little of those little white pearls, okay? Because I want these small spaces to be gray. So I added my graphite and then I'm going to soften it so that that background area is shaded into a nice gray tone. Okay? So you get a nice gray value. Okay, once that's done, you can come in, and in this case, because I have so much black here, I would actually go in and I would color in, because I'm going to leave these white, I would color in all of these little tiny spaces. Because that adds a different depth and a different look to the piece than leaving it uncolored. And obviously, I would color much more neatly if I wasn't trying to get as many things on camera for you as I can. So I'm only going to do the one side, right? Now I'm going to come back with my graphite again, and I'm going to add a curve of graphite on the outside of these pearls. Now here they kind of overlap, so I'm going to ignore that space. And I'm just going to kind of curve right here and right here. Okay. And then I'm going to take my tortillon and I'm going to soften that. And think of it like a little puddle of graphite around the pearl. And there's a lot of dark and there's a lot of shading kind of going on here. So they will, and you can just add more as you see fit. And you'll see that they kind of seem to float over top of those channels. You can then shade the entire piece by adding a little bit of graphite on the bottom or on the top. In this case, I'm going to add it on both. And you can see I went a little wider than a pencil width, maybe even a couple of pencil widths. I'm going to take my tortillon, I'm going to soften that, and I'm going to pull it out so that it slowly fades from that where it's really dark up to my border. And it'll get lighter because you have less graphite to drag as you pull it towards your border. Okay, so I do one side, and then I come on, I'm going to soften this. And I always work in just little small spaces because that lets me pull the graphite and it kind of fades into my, my border. If I try and pull too much at once, I kind of run out before I get to my, my border. But you can see here how 
now that whole little strip seems more 3D. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do the one that I was really excited to share with you. Um, this has some complex shading to it. So um, I just, by doing that, you'll notice that my Torteon has a lot less graphite on it than it did before. I like that for this because I don't want a bunch of graphite to be on my Torteon for shading the way that I'm going to. If there were, t were a lot on here, I could take my Torteon and I could lightly buff it. This is just a little, a little sandpaper block, but you could certainly get an emery board or nail file, which is usually what I keep in my purse with my, my tangling supplies. And that certainly works. So now I'm going to do my last tile for the day. I'm going to add my border. I'm going to take my micron. I'm going to add a curve across my tile. So kind of like, like you were going to draw a rainbow. And then I'm going to add an aura on either side. Okay. And it doesn't matter how wide you go. You just kind of want them to be about the same distance. Okay. And I'm going to add some big pearls to this. Right. So I'm going to add... I'm leaving a little bit of space this time. They're not nestled right up next to each other. You don't have to do it this way. You could certainly nestle them next to each other because the difference in this one is going to be in the shading. Okay, so I've added those in. I'm going to add some small pearls nestled in the background here. but this one has more negative space. Okay. I am going to blacken that in, but I'm going to do that at the end. Okay, so this is what we're going to end up with. I'm going to now take my pencil and I am going to add, so remember thinking about this, it's the face of a clock. I am going to add an orb about the size of one of these small pearls just under my 12 o'clock point on each one of these. Okay? I want you to then leave a space again about the same size as this pearl. And we are going to add one slightly smaller directly underneath that and then a still smaller one off to the right. And this is a more complex shading. This isn't something that normally I would do a lot of. I just think it looks really cool in this pattern and it's something that I haven't shared before, a way of shading orbs, okay? And you can do this with any orbs. It doesn't have to be an Anamoto, okay? So you have kind of this it actually kind of looks like Swiss cheese right now. Okay. And those are there in pencil. I'm going to do this one right here. I'm going to ask for questions and then I'll do a second one before we go. Okay. So I'm going to come to this, this first bubble, right? This first little orb that I've drawn in pencil. And I'm going to add a puddle of graphite slightly to the right. Okay. I'm going to do that on each of these little graphite orbs that I've placed in there. I'm going to come up into this main orb and I'm going to think of it as the face of a clock again. And I'm going to go from about one o'clock to about three o'clock and I'm going to add about a pencil width of graphite. Okay. 
I'm now going to take my tortillon and I'm going to soften that little smile or that little puddle of graphite that's around these little orbs. Okay? So you kind of have this little smudge there. I'm now going to come in with my tortillon and I'm going to soften and spread that little shadow that I had made. So I'm, my goal is to smooth it out to about 11 o'clock and down to about 6. Okay. So I have these little puddles and then I've softened this edge. I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to add another strip of graphite over here on the other side from about mm, 10 to maybe 7. And I'm just going to repeat what I did over here on this side and I'm going to bring those edges up to where I had spread my, or spread my graphite to already. Okay. There's a lot of graphite on this right now. I'm going to take what's on my tortillon and what's already there and I'm going to just kind of smooth it out so I have no harsh edges. Okay. Once I get this all done, and obviously I would come in right here and I'd really work this so that it creates a nice shadow on either side. I don't want any of those harsh lines. And I'm going to come into the center here and I'm going to create a little pearl. Remember I said you wanted them to be about the same width, right? So I'm going to lightly create another pearl. And now I'm going to soften that so that the center of this is a little darker than the rest. But I'm going around those little spaces that I had left white. Those little highlights. Okay, so you're just going to kind of darken that in. Tip it around. Play with it. Okay, this is one of those I encourage you to hold it out at arm's length and look at it from different angles because the closer you are to it, the harder it is to see if you're getting the effect that you want. Okay, sometimes you even need to kind of set it off to the side. Right? You might discover that your orbs are a little too bright in which case you can just lightly spread, even with your finger, just a little bit across. And you're going to have this little orb that looks like it has these little accents of light. If you do too much of your gray, we say you don't necessarily need a pencil for tangling, and that's very true. But don't ever be afraid to use your er an eraser as a tool. So if I wanted to come in and maybe I went, oh, I really want a bright white spot there. I could go to my, I could go to my jelly roll or I could take the edge of an eraser and just make a teeny tiny little dab to brighten up a spot. Okay. So that's the way that you create that effect. I would also come in and I would accent and remember I drew my line on the right side instead of the left. So I would add a little curve of graphite on the right inside of these that I would then just soften with my tortillon. Okay. Now I said I would ask for questions with this because I know it's a much more complicated shading than what I normally do. I don't like to th throw tricky, complex shading at you because Zentangle is supposed to be about it being simple. But I also know that an effect like this that maybe you hadn't used before can sometimes take something to a completely different level and completely change up the way that you might use it. So if anyone has any questions before we wrap, I would love to I would love to kind of field those and then I'll do it one more time.
looks like everybody's good. All right, so like I said, because I know this is a little more complex, I'm going to do it again in case you want to take notes or in case you watched the first time and you want to do it with me this time. So I come into my pencil orbs. I add a little puddle around each edge. Right? I add some graphite along that edge. I take my um, I take my tortillon and I soften, right? So I soften these because by softening these now, it makes it easier to just kind of blend everything later. Okay. So I've got this here, I've got this here, and now I'm going to soften this edge as well, dragging my graphite over to the other side a little bit. So I want this to kind of come around and to start to fill in. Okay. And I turn my tile so I don't drag my hand through it or anything. And then once I have that softened, I'm going to add graphite on the other side. Soften that. So I kind of connected it, right? So I'm, and then I'm going to blend it all so that I kind of have like a smooth surface. In the center, I'm going to make another orb, approximately the same size as this first one. And I'm going to do that in graphite. Okay, so I'm being very careful to not lay down too much, but I want to lay down like another thin layer of graphite on top of that. Donna, yes, this is great technique for a steampunk effect. Okay. So I've got that there. I'm now going to soften this and pull this out so that it creates more depth in the center. And then I'm just going to kind of come through and I'm just going to kind of continue to work it until all those harsh lines just disappear. Okay. So once I have that done, I like to use I like to use the gray and instead of adding um, more of the little orbs in these channels I like to just add a strip of graphite along both edges on the inside and then I'll come in and I soften one and then I turn my tile and I soften the other and I'm not spreading this graphite I just want to soften it because what that gives me is it replicates that gray that I already used while creating a built-in highlight okay and I would do that on both sides And then once I have it done, I would come in with my graphic or with my micron. I'm only going to do a little bit here. And then you could leave the background white, but I find that it really makes it pop if you come in and you color in the background in black. Um, Donna, you had asked about steampunk. Um, this gives a very metal look. It looks like these are made of, of steel or something like that. Um, you could fill in with a silver or a black glaze pen, something to really kind of add a very steampunky effect to it. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is our live for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you got some neat ideas. Um, I'm just going to kind of lay down these pieces so that you can take a look and if you want um, make a quick note or whatever it is that you want to do and then later today I will have these tiles finished and they will be in our um, on our pattern sheet um, Catherine 
I've played with lots of other light sources, and I use the specific three dots for this only because it's easy to teach in a short for, in a short time format like this. If I break, I could break it down in a million other ways, but the lives are mostly meant to be ideas for playing with the tangles, and um, if pe and people come at it from all different skill levels. So I go with something that is really easy to explain where everything is. Okay, so I hope everybody has a great day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and look for the pattern sheet later this afternoon. And I hope I will see you next week. If you are not on my newsletter list, um, you can get to that by, there's a link on my Facebook page. And if you can't find it, you can always email me at whimsybykelly at gmail.com. I do have a newsletter coming out at the end of the week, which will have my spring classes in it. So everybody have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.